This is the Marvel Z Fit Lite, and it's kind of like having two mice in one because it's modular. You can easily customize this mouse to use whichever color and size best fits your needs. But is it worth it? Keep watching to find out. Currently there are 7 color options and each color comes with 2 grip sizes, a large grip and a small one. To swap them out all you have to do is take off the magnetic side buttons and then push down on the mouse until it pops out. Then you simply snap the new one in place and put the buttons back on. The large grip makes the overall length of the mouse right around 125mm and brings the mouse weight to 98 grams. While the small grip makes the weight 87 grams and makes the length a mere 110mm making it a potential candidate for fingertip grip users. In fact, with the small grip, it comes in just a little shorter than the Logitech G305. But of course, as I have fairly large hands, I spent most of my time using the large grip, which wasn't all that different from the small grip other than the fact that it was longer. And the shape is what I would describe as decent. It does feel a little blocky in the hand, but it was surprisingly good. It really fills out the hand and it's quite comfortable to use, although it's definitely not as molded and curved as I'm used to at other mice. But it's a safe shape that I think would please a lot of people, and I could aim pretty well with it too. Now I did run into some pretty serious issues, but I'll get into that later, because first I want to talk about the build quality. The build quality on the model I got was really good, so good that it puts other bigger mice manufacturers to shame. If this company can produce products like this, then there's no real reason why bigger companies can't. It is worth mentioning however that as with any mouse, there's always going to be some variance in build quality. I may have just gotten super lucky, or they may have even cherry picked this for me. I don't really know, but what I do know is this copy has better build quality than some mice that are double its price. But it wasn't perfect either. Because the side buttons are magnetic and can be removed, there was a little wobble to them. Besides that, there wasn't anything else that really stood out in the build quality department. There was a little pre and post travel on the main buttons, but nothing too major. The clicks were nice and the buttons were tight, so there weren't any issues with side play either. Speaking of clicks, the switches inside are Amarons rated for 20 million clicks in case anyone was wondering. All the clicks on this mouse felt good, but what I will say is the scroll wheel is a tad bit hard to press down. However, the feel of the scroll wheel is great. It has this texturized rubber to give it more feedback when scrolling. I'm not sure how long it'll take for this to wear down, but in the meantime it works quite nicely. Moving on, the sensor this mouse uses is the Pixart 3327, which is a budget sensor, but it's also on the list of flawless sensors. But here's where things start to get odd to say the least. The max DPI the 3327 supports is 6200, but yet this mouse lets you set the DPI all the way up to 12,000. And two of the default DPI settings on this mouse also go above the sensor's limit. Which is a problem, because while the mouse firmware will let you set the DPI to a value higher than 6200, the sensor will no longer be tracking flawlessly at that point. This is definitely an undersight, but as long as you select the DPI that the sensor will actually support, then you shouldn't really run into many issues as far as tracking is concerned. I also found it strange that the default DPI steps didn't have the three most common DPIs. Out of the box you can't use 400, 800, or 1600 DPI, and the DPI steps start at 1200. Fortunately you can change this in the software, which is something you'll definitely want to download, because for whatever reason this mouse is also set to 500Hz instead of 1000Hz by default, which is a setting that most people are going to want to change right away. Unless you have a very specific reason, then you shouldn't be using 500Hz. In the software you can also make macros and change the lighting effects, which actually look pretty sweet on this mouse because it has 3 RGB zones. You can also cycle through the 12 different settings by using the RGB button on the bottom of the mouse. Another thing I always appreciate is when a mouse comes pre-installed with good mouse gates and a flexible cable. And the Marvel Z Fit Lite comes with both. The gates are real PTFE and have a fantastic glide out of the box. And the cable did still have a little bit of stiffness to it, but it was flexible and it was certainly better than what you would get with say a rubber cable. I would put it right on par with the Razer Viper cable. Now as I alluded to earlier, I did have some more problems, and again, it was DPI related. When I first loaded in the game, I noticed something was off, but I wasn't quite sure what. I tested for various things like input lag, mouse acceleration, and anything else I could think of, but I still couldn't figure out what it was, until I discovered that the DPI settings were actually lying to me. Through the use of a DPI analyzer tool, I was able to confirm my suspicions, and the DPI setting I was using was off by about 13%, meaning when I would set the mouse to 1600 DPI, it was using about 1800 DPI. But once I knew this from the DPI analyzer tool, I was able to adjust my in-game sensitivity accordingly. But what's more is the difference in DPI was not consistent across every DPI setting. For example, the difference when using 800 DPI averaged out to be roughly 34% faster, but when using 1200 DPI, it was somewhere around 40% faster, which is way off from the original 13% I experienced on 1600 DPI. I did test this on multiple occasions and tried many fixes like resetting the setting profile in the software, but this issue still persisted. It's unclear, however, if this is simply a software problem or a hardware problem. 
But this issue isn't completely unheard of. Even some popular mice from Logitech and Sowie have had similar problems in the past. This tool exists for a reason, and that's because there's always a chance of this happening on any mouse. But seeing as now I only have one copy to test, I can't be certain that it's only an issue on this copy, or if it's an issue on every copy. This does need to be investigated further, but ultimately, it's probably not a make or break situation, because once I was aware of what was actually going on, I could easily correct my sensitivity in-game to make up for the difference. But this is something to keep an eye out for if you decide to buy one for yourself. Shout out to Marvel Z for sending this mouse out to me to review. I'll have their link in the description if you're interested. 